Hey, welcome back to our channel. We've been running our home off the grid using six EG4 Life Power 4 batteries for almost two years now. And while it has been wonderful, there are many times in the summer when we can't get enough energy to run our air conditioners all the way through the night, or there's weeks when we get two to four days of totally cloudy weather and we have to recharge our batteries from the grid. Now, if you know anything about us, then you know our goal is to get to 100% off-grid energy self-sufficiency. So today we're taking a full step and we're adding on to our solar battery storage. We've opted to add the EG4 wall mount indoor battery. It's 14.3 kilowatt hours, 280 amp hour battery. And this battery has some amazing features you won't find in most similar size batteries and certainly not in most of the kit batteries that you order from overseas. The most important features we were looking for in a LifePo 4 battery was safety. Now I don't know of any other battery out there with more safety features than the EG4 wall mount indoor battery. To start with, Mounted to specs, it's UL listed for both UL 1972 and UL 9548A. The battery has internal heating to prevent charging damage below freezing temperatures, and it has built-in rapid shutdown with RSD-capable inverters. It also features dual fire arresters inside the battery case, one of my favorites. It communicates flawlessly with any of the current EG4 inverters, as well as inverters from Solark, Victron, Growatt, Dye, Schneider, Luxfire, Mega Rebel, most of them. It also includes a 600 amp integrated bus plug with a 200 amp BMS and a 10 year warranty to 80% depth of discharge and 8,000 cycles. The LCD screen provides up to the minute data reporting and it features a built in breaker and power switch for the BMS. Yes, I know, we could have built a similar size battery for less money, but we couldn't have built a safer battery under any condition. Now, be warned, this battery weighs more than an NFL lineup. You'll need assistance getting it out of the box and into position. Now be warned, I cheat. I used a hydraulic flat cart, and that made it a bit easier to set upright. For safety, it comes with a metal mount on the back to hang it on a wall just a few inches off the floor. And if you had kids around, don't fail to secure it properly to the wall because it can easily tip over and crush something. You wouldn't want that. Now, our challenge with the new wall mount indoor battery was figuring out how to integrate it in to my existing server rack battery. And here's where some research and testing had to be conducted. In my current system configuration, I have two EG4 6000 XP inverters, both operating in parallel. And both inverters are tied to a Victron power end bus bar. This is also where the six EG4 100 amp hour server rack batteries are connected, providing power and battery storage to both inverters. The primary inverter communicates with the battery bank via an RS485 connection. Now to add a battery bank, a new battery needs to have the same battery chemistry LiPo 4, and cell count, 16 cells per battery, and voltage, 48 volt long. So both EG4 share all these points. The only difference between the batteries is the amp hours and the fact that both batteries feature a different BMS that can't really communicate effectively together. Because of this, one battery system will have to operate without battery communication to the inverter or the other battery. In this case, I chose for the largest system to communicate directly with the inverter, and the smaller wall mount battery is only connected at the bus bar and is not in any closed loop communication. While I was doing this, I wanted to upgrade my server rack batteries as well, so I added one of the new Life Power 4 version 2 server rack batteries. And I installed this on the first position of my six battery rack system that's already full of the Life Power 4 version 1 battery. Now my hope is eventually to add a whole nother rack of version two Life Power 4 batteries. I like them so much. And to do that, I'd need at least one version two battery in this rack to communicate effectively with another rack of version two batteries. Hey, when I bought my first Life Power 4 version one battery, I paid over $1,400. And now today you can buy a version two Life Power 4 battery, which is a phenomenally better battery for almost 25% less when you use my discount code that's in the video description. The critical points to know when adding the EG4 wall mount battery to a rack of Life Power 4 batteries is that both batteries must only be connected together at the bus bar. And both batteries need to have a T-Class fuse or other approved overcurrent protection device installed as close to the battery as possible. I've installed a 350 amp T-Class fuse for all six of the server rack batteries, and I went on a 200 amp breaker for my uh, overcurrent protection for the uh, single wall mount battery. So this install today is only different. When you're using the version two Life Power 4 battery, it's the first battery in the server rack. 
there are two critically important points to understand. First, the version one live power four battery only has four dip switch pins, while the version two has six. To use these together, the first four pins on the version two live power four battery go with the four pins on the version one live power four battery. The last two pins on the version two battery are in the down position when you're using the version one battery. Here are the settings for the dip switch pins for all six batteries. The second thing to know is because of the rapid shutdown in the version two live power four battery, the battery communication cord between the version one and the version two battery has to be modified. Now this can be easily accomplished just by cutting all but the brown and the brown white wires on the standard RS-45 cable used for better communications. In this case, I used a green cable here, but it, it's the same cable. And you can see how I removed the wire insulation and cut all but the brown and the brown white combination wires in the cable. This cable will allow you to connect your version one live power four battery to your new version two live power four battery, and it won't trip the rapid shutdown. So once you accomplish all these two steps, you can combine your legacy version one live power four batteries with new version two live power four batteries. And there's also options to combine the version two battery with LL batteries and you can find these online and in the Life Power 4 version 2 menu. So once I got my server rack running with my new version 2 battery, it was time to add the EG4 wall mount and or battery to the system at the bus plug. Now again, in this case, I'm using the Victron power in for my bus plug. This is different than the Lynx distributor in that it is just a bus bar with no fuses or lights. It looks very similar though. My Victron power in connects both inverters to my server rack batteries, so it has one more space where I can connect the wall mount battery. To do this, I use the quick connect cables provided with the wall mount battery. Now, actually, the wall mount battery comes with two pairs of the quick connect cables, and that's like $150 value. But what I did was I added a 2 aught 3 8 inch terminal lug to the end of the positive and negative leads from the wall mount battery. Now, when you're doing that, remember that small zip tie trick. These, these cables are very fine stranded wire and you'll need a, a zip tie to keep them all together and get them inside that two-aught terminal lug. Make sure you cut to the end where there's just enough wire exposed to fit inside the terminal lug. Now, I like the cell term lugs, uh, mainly because they're UL branded and they're the heaviest ones I've found. So check the uh, description, I'll leave a link to these. Now, once we get the cable lugs on the cable ends, all we need to do is connect them to the battery and to the bus plug. Now, be sure all the batteries are off and meter check everything before going forward. Once we get the battery connected and all connections are double checked, then we can start the largest battery up first, which is the server rack. To help things get off to a smooth start, try to get the voltage of both batteries, the server rack and the wall mount battery, as close to each other as possible, ideally within a quarter or a half volt of the URI. This just shortens the time it takes for the battery packs to balance each other out. Once both battery packs are operating, you'll only see the primary battery pack reported results on the EG4 app or on Solar Assistant like I use. However, the state of charge and the voltage should be the same for both the server rack and the wall mount battery, since they're both operating together at the same voltage. At this point, it's important to note that EG4 and Signature Solar do not recommend this procedure as they only recommend combining batteries of similar models like server rack, server rack, or wall mount, wall mount. The main reason is obviously they have different BMS modules and different firmware. And there's always a possibility that someone might try to connect both batteries communications together and the BMS modules could get conflicted commands, potentially causing damage to the batteries or even your inverter. So as always, follow my example here in this video at your own risk. Understanding it's not EG4's approved procedure or you could cause battery damage or inverter damage if done incorrectly. Hey, I hope this video answered any questions you may have had, and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please let us know by smashing that subscribe button so you can see what we have coming up next on the channel. Here at Terry Hill Farm, we're living just two steps from off grid. And with our new EG4 wall mount indoor battery, we know that we can stay off the grid for 50% longer, thanks to the additional Life Pro 4 battery stick. Be sure to check the video description for links to all these products. And hey, thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.